Hi, I'm Peter Quintel with Dennis and Yachting. Today I like taking on board a beautiful yacht built by the prestigious shipyard Abiking and Rasmussen. She's a 139 raised pilot house that goes by the name No Boys. One thing you should know about this yacht is she is built of 100% aluminum, her hull and superstructure. From the day of her launch until today, she's undergone well over $13 million in refits over her lifespan. Her most recent notable refit was at the Delta Shipyard, where they lengthened her, added additional staterooms, modified her propulsion system to accommodate the higher horsepower MTU engines. She can achieve 5,500 nautical mile range at 10 knot cruise. What I'd like to point out is throughout this walkthrough video, you'll notice that the main deck level, the flybridge level are all on one single level. There are no stairs or transitions between cabins or spaces. I'd like to point out this yacht has six staterooms on the lower level. This lower level is accessed by two separate stairwells. The forward stairwell is accessed to the owner's level, which has four staterooms, including a master cabin. The aft stairwell has access to two staterooms along with the crew laundry and provisioning area. Keeping in line with the privacy aspect of the yacht, she actually has two main deck salons separated by glass etched pocket doors. One thing I'd like to point out that this yacht has, which most do not in this size range, is a battery inverter system. This inverter system allows you to run most of your systems overnight for up to 10 hours without the need of running a generator. We're gonna to start today's walkthrough in an area that is my personal favorite space on this yacht, and that's the flybridge. This area is over 60 feet long, end to end of nothing but pure outdoor living space. First area of the flybridge I'd like to point out is the area where the water toys are stored. These wave runners can be launched and retrieved easily with the crane davit that's located to the starboard side. Also found in this immediate area are a pair of 10-man life rafts. Immediately forward of the wave runners is a six-person jacuzzi. This jacuzzi was added in 2017. Looking up from the jacuzzi, you can see a radar arch, which is comprised of a pair of Furuna 96-mile open array radars. At her tallest height, she has a 41-foot air draft. Another feature I'd like to point out is the exhaust outlet over the port side arch. This is used by the port side generator and cuts down any diesel fumes generated while on anchor. This is all built into a huge overhead structure that has been replaced throughout her last refit process. As you can see, this shades the forward half of the flybridge from the elements, and there's even built-in lighting into the framework. This overhead allows you to make the most of the lounging area below. There's also a wet bar up here to the port side. It's in this area that we find a grill along the aft, a sink, an ice maker, and a refrigerator. This galley ties in with the seating just forward, which features hydraulic tables that can raise and lower depending upon what you're using the space for. The forwardmost feature to look at on the upper deck is the upper helm. The seating up here consists of a single bench seat over on the starboard side that works alongside a long bench seat of the captain and mate. The visibility up here is fantastic, both for the captain and the guests spending time on board. The main helm is located just forward and a few steps down from the flybridge in No Boys Ray's pilot house. The most outstanding thing about the lower helm position is the access from the flybridge and from both port and starboard sides of the main level. This is a feature you don't normally see on yachts of this size. At the lower helm, you have full control over the yacht and all of her systems that make the 139 one of the finest options on the brokerage market today. For example, control over the fin stabilization system, which was recently gone through and serviced. For seating, there's a bench seat in the aft section, as well as a night watch system, where you can control and monitor all the boat's tankage. From here, you can also take a look at what the CCTV system is picking up. 
When it comes to keeping tabs on all the navigation systems and your family as you stay on board, New Buoys has all the benefits of a classic style yacht with modernized systems. Now we're going to move to the stern and take a look at this space designed for connecting you with the water and outdoors. This is primarily accessed by way of the center stairwell that leads down from the aft deck. The most interesting feature found in this area is the hydraulic nautical structures swivel passerelle system. The lower section of the stern boasts a full beam swim platform and offers you access into the large lazarette on the port side. Behind this watertight door is plenty of storage for dive tanks and water toys. This lazarette is an area that we will see again when we are on the lower level. For now, let's jump up to the aft deck and take a look at the most recently updated section of the yacht. In this area, there's a teak table with seating for up to 10 on the starboard side and a set tee opposite to the port. It's beneath the seating that we find something truly unique. A series of batteries that drive a power inverter system. This useful feature was added in the spring of 2020 and offers you silent anchoring at night with no need to run the generator. She is the sister ship of a German Coast Guard cutter. And in the years since she was commissioned, decades of strategic advances have been made and added to this capable explorer. One of the features where you really get a feel for the original design of this yacht is found on her bow. You see it in how beamy the foredeck itself is and also how big the bow flare is from the entry point of the water. The foredeck is accessed by a pair of asymmetrical walkarounds that connect you fore and aft. These side decks are finished with a teak sole and offer you safe passage to a unique seating area and the anchorage system. Found center line is a beamy sun pad on the same level as the main deck. Right next to this are a pair of polished storage hatches that open up into the deck. Forward of the guest space is where you find her ground tackle. Found here is an ideal vertical windlass that raises and lowers a stainless steel Bruce anchor with 550 feet of galvanized chain. Wrapping up with the exterior portion of today's walkthrough, we're going to take a look at this yacht's stunning interior, starting from the salon. To me, the most impressive aspect of the salon is her volume, thanks to a split layout. Both sections benefit from large windows and a beautiful high-gloss millwork package. The aft salon is a perfect place to entertain or get lost in conversation. From in here, there's access to the lower deck from the starboard staircase this is where we're headed next before we continue forward on the main deck. Our first stop down here are two guest cabins located on the port side of the yacht. These both feature a berth outboard beneath the hull windows with storage all around. Each of these has a private ensuite head and vanity and stall shower. What makes the aft cabin different than the forward one is that it has a larger footprint and there's also a desk on the aft bulkhead. Looking out from here, we see a ladder that leads up to the aft deck as well as a series of cabinets along the starboard side. It's in one of these lower cabinets that we find the inverter room that offers you 15,000 watts of inverter power that drives the AC in the cabins and crew room. Heading all the way aft on the lower deck brings us into a versatile utility room that's loaded with crucial storage and a handful of useful features, such as a sink to the starboard, under counter refrigeration, and loads of countertop space. Located on the forward bulkhead is the yacht's first of two laundry centers with new Miele commercial washer dryers installed in 2019. Located right next to this is the entrance into a large lazarette, which we've already taken a look at when on the swim platform. Leaving here and headed forward through the lower companionway, we are next going to take a look at the engine room. 
The centerpiece in here are twin MTU 12V2000 M92 common rails. Each of these has 1635 horsepower and have very low hours. These engines were installed in 2009 and feature triple turbos as well as self-cooling transmissions. Another piece of equipment found down here is the Alpha Laval fuel separator. This is next to a Whispering Angel Silver Ion water purifier. The Northern Lights generators found in this space are both 99kW and are in great shape. Two other great features down here are HEM 2800 gallon per day water maker and an AC shore power conversion system with seamless transfer. Something that separates a northern European build like this from most other regions is the attention to detail paid during the entire build process. That means you have a yacht that's very quiet and not only is she well designed but no boys is also very efficient. She can achieve 5,500 nautical mile range at 10 knot cruise. When at fast cruise, this Abiking is running at 1800 RPMs, offering a very comfortable ride at 16 knots. When it comes to her top speed, you can expect to see her hit 21 knots while running at wide open throttle. From here, let's jump back inside and into the forward half of the salon, which is entered through two etched glass doors. Upon stepping inside, I want to first point out the new AV system you'll find in here. In addition to the new sound system, there's also a Plex Media Server network throughout the whole vessel containing movies and series. This extensive library plays on a new 50-inch wall-mounted TV. Located just forward of the seating area in here is a formal dining space. The dining salon is open to the main salon and is aft of the galley with extensive crystal and table service storage around. This storage was well planned as evidenced by the felt that lines the stemware storage. Just a few steps forward of the salon to the starboard is a day head forward of the formal dining. Before continuing further forward, there's another set of stairs leading down to the lower deck. At the foot of the stairs, you'll first arrive at the second laundry center. A cool feature in the immediate area is a tunnel underfoot where you have easy access to the fuel and water tanks as well as the headhunter sewage treatment plant. Taking a look at the guest accommodations found down here in the forward half of the lower deck, we have a pair of nearly identical guest staterooms. These are located after the companionway and feature a twin berth layout. Like the other guest cabins we've already taken a look at, these have hall windows and plenty of storage. The only difference between these mirrored guest cabins is found in the en-suites. Over on the starboard side, there's a jacuzzi tub instead of a more standard shower stall like in the port en-suite. Leaving here and walking forward in the companionway, we next step into the port side VIP stateroom. The bed is placed under a pair of hull side windows and the layout here is as spacious as it is practical. Opposite the bed inboard is an L-shaped desk that is directly below a bookcase. Heading all the way forward on the lower level brings us to the sixth guest stateroom we'll be looking at, the master stateroom. The owner's cabin on board, no boys, is the best of all worlds. It's a full beam and well equipped, while also putting you closer to your family and friends' staterooms. In addition to the opening port lights found in every stateroom, storage is also a big theme in all the guest accommodations, especially the master. Like the rest of the guests' en-suites on this yacht, the master stateroom is no exception. It has a Jack and Jill configuration, which is separated by a stall shower and finished with onyx stonework. Wrapping up in the sixth and final sleeping accommodations, follow me up to the main deck where we'll pick up in the galley just forward of the formal dining space. You enter into the galley on the starboard side and stepping inside, you'll see all the commercial appliances you need to keep everyone on board fed with gourmet meals. 
In here we find a dishwasher, commercial refrigerator, freezer, and six burner cooktop. Other cooking appliances include a convection microwave, griddle, and steamer. Around the corner to the port is a coveted amount of cold storage that is found in a pair of large stainless steel cold storage units. One of these is a refrigerator and the other is a deep freezer. Right next to these, outboard is a side deck access door that you'll pass by on your way to the crew quarters. You first enter the common area where there is a dinette, fridge, and microwave. There are three crew cabins down here, all of which have twin berth configurations. The captain's cabin, which is the aftmost to starboard, has a private ensuite, while the forward cabins share a head and shower. Heading back up to the main deck, follow me through the butler pantry, which consists of refrigeration, ice maker, and crystal storage. This brings us to our last stop, the on-deck owner's office. The main attraction here are the spectacular windows that surround the office on nearly all sides. On the forward end, the windows wrap around a 40-inch TV, and there's also an extensive desk area against the aft bulkhead. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to tour No Boys with me today. If you'd like more information or to schedule a personal walkthrough, please contact me anytime.